Joining me now is Dave Ulrich. He is the executive director of the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence Cities Initiative. Dave, thanks so much for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you, it's a pleasure. How have you found Great Lakes Week so far? Well, it's been excellent so far. We've had sessions yesterday with the Great Lakes Commission and the International Joint Commission and the Healing Our Waters group started today. Mm -hmm. And as usual, the information about Lake Erie and what's happening with the harmful algal blooms and Asian carp and all of the other big issues. Uh, some of the best people in the, in the region are here and sharing their information about it. So the second year in a row that you get everybody <coughs> all under one roof to mm -hmm. talk about that. How important is it to make sure that either you compare agendas, compare notes, and see if you can get some conversations to move some things forward? Well, it's absolutely essential. This is something I've been advocating for, I think, over 10 years, that all of the groups that have something to do with the Great Lakes try at least once a year to get together at the same place at the same time, because everybody the rest of the time should be out doing their work to clean up the Great Lakes. And if we can be more efficient in terms of exchanging the information, uh, this is the way to do it. And last year was an excellent start. This year it's even better in part because we're all in one venue and we don't have to chase back and forth across mm -hmm. town to get to one meeting or another. So that part of it has been an even uh, big improvement. So talk to me a little bit about what you believe are some of the biggest issues that are facing the Great Lakes right now. You referenced the algal blooms mm -hmm. in Lake Erie and other parts of the Great Lakes. Would you say that is the, the top problem? I would say that for right now it is the, the, the top threat and potential problem is clearly Asian carp. Mm -hmm. The top current problem uh, is the nutrient loading uh, primarily to Lake Erie but to other portions of the Great Lakes, particularly Saginaw Bay up in Lake Huron and Green Bay and Lake Michigan are the other big areas that people are concerned about. We didn't have as large of an algal bloom this year as we did last year on Lake Erie. Um, so I think sometimes when pe that disappears or it's not as bad as it was, people say, well, maybe we're past that problem and we <laughs> should kind of move on to something else. Why is it important to uh, make sure you still stay on, on top of this and still move forward, even if it wasn't as bad this year? We were lucky weather this mm -hmm. year. And unfortunately, it was the dry weather that hurt the farmers and a lot of other people in the hot weather that resulted in much less runoff into Lake Erie and many of the other parts of the Great Lakes. And at least to Jeff Reuter of uh, Ohio State University and the Sea Grant from mm -hmm. yesterday, he said that that's the dominant factor as to why we have not had the blooms this year. This problem is not gone, it's not gonna go away. We have very major phosphorus reductions in some nitrate reductions we've got to get to Lake Erie, and we've got to get them sooner rather than later. Is that working with um, some of the farmers in the area, seeing if they can do some different practices? Uh, yes, farmers and cities play a part in this as well. I think the larger contribution is coming from non-point sources and farms, but urban areas need to look at this as well. Lawn care products, things like that but the municipal wastewater treatment plants as well. Great reductions in phosphorus loadings have been achieved over time. And if you look at this from a cost effective standpoint, the non-point sources are where you can get a lot greater reductions for a lot less cost. Let's talk about invasive species and specifically Asian carp. Not only as this <coughs> an environmental issue, this is also turned into a political issue yes. with a lot of the states. Um, and it's also turned into looking at a commerce issue if we're talking about separating the waterways Lake Michigan and the Mississippi River Basin. Where are we right now in terms of a possible separation and what more needs to be done? Well, I want to add that it's a huge economic issue as well. Not only is the $7 billion commercial and sport fishery uh, industry at stake mm -hmm. in the Great Lakes, but uh, other uh, economic elements as well. Where we stand right now, uh, our organization, the Cities Initiative, in combination and partnership with the Great Lakes Commission, completed a study and report in January of this year called Restoring the Natural Divide that basically demonstrates that it is feasible to reseparate, recreate the natural divide between the Mississippi River Basin and the Great Lakes Basin in the Chicago Waterway System. It's not a simple process and it's not a cheap process as any major infrastructure pro uh, project mm -hmm. uh, would be, but it has to be done in a way that stops the in invasive species, both Asian carp and many others from going in either direction, but it has to be done in a way when the transportation can still flow Flood control can be handled and water quality issues can be handled. That's what makes it so complex. The actual separation is the least expensive part of it. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is undergoing their study right now. Yes. 
How similar is your study to what they are studying, and is there frustration that you were able to do this in conjunction with the Great Lakes Commission for $2 million in about, what, a year, two years, yes. and they are spending perhaps a much longer period of time? They are doing a much larger and more comprehensive study than we are. We look just at the Chicago area waterway system and just at physical separation. We did that for a reason because the Chicago area waterway system presents the highest risk for the carp getting in and we feel that the natural divide with the physical separation presents the highest likelihood of being able to stop the Asian carp from getting in and uh, invasive species from moving in any direction. The Corps is looking at all potential options for uh, stopping the flow of the invasive species and they're looking at 19 different locations across the Great Lakes. We think that's good, we think that's important, but the highest risk area needs to be addressed first and it needs to be addressed fast. That's why we did what we did. We wanted to jump start and accelerate the work on that particular part of the problem. People have been watching this around the Great Lakes space and I think when you mention the Great Lakes and when I mention to people what we're doing here on PBS, the first thing to think about is Asian carp because yep. it has been the, mo the most highly publicized issue, I think, in, in the Great Lakes. Bottom line, who makes the decision whether or not there is separation? It'll ultimately be Congress who decides that, and I think the Corps of Engineers will be the key recommending uh, organization. We wanted to give them a lot of good information faster to help accelerate their process, but this is going to shift into the political realm sooner rather than later. It's there already, in fact, but the underlying work technical work does need to be done, but it's got to be done a lot faster. Let's jump into the political arena because then someone has mm. to make a case. Someone has to now then do the PR campaign to the public to try to get the information out there that perhaps is this the best way to do it. And there's going to be a lot of lobbying, which I would seem to think would come from corporations mm. who maybe do business along the waterways mm -hmm. um, and also from the city of Chicago, who perhaps does not want to overhaul their water system. And perhaps it should be because of the age of the age of their system. Are we going to see a lot of years wasted in conversation and political debate when something should be done sooner than later? Well, it'll take longer than I would like, certainly. But I don't think that it's going to take uh, years and years and years. This is just too pressing a problem. And in, as dealing with uh, Asian carp, as with any other invasive species, the real solution is prevention and not to let it get there in the first, in the place. first place. You mentioned the city of Chicago. Uh, Mayor Emanuel has spoken out that um, creating a Chicago River that would be a new recreational frontier uh, for Chicagoans and people in the area is a high priority for him. Now there are other priorities he's dealing with now as well, but he, has, uh, he is on uh, the executive committee for our study and has expressed his support for the work that we are doing. Now, neither he nor Governor Quinn has come out and said, we've got to separate and we've got to separate tomorrow. I was just going to say, he, no? he, separated, so he yeah. supports the work that you're doing, yes. but he's keeping his options open in Absolutely. terms of they haven't come down on either side Absolutely. Yet. More work needs to be done before the governor and the mayor are going to step in. But this is much bigger than Chicago and Illinois. It's it the whole Great Lakes. It's Canada. It's the Mississippi River Basin as well. And let's also look at beyond Asian carp because, say, the Army Corps comes back in 2013, say Congress makes a decision mm -hmm. to, to um, separate, and then we have the construction phase of what it would take to get this project done and the price tag on it. Are we already past Asian carp perhaps getting into Lake Michigan? Are we looking at the next species down the line that could you know, make, its, make its way? You won't like this, but yes and no. We are not already beyond Asian carp. We can still keep Asian carp from getting in. I know there has been environmental DNA that has been identified, but there is no evidence to suggest that populations significant enough that can establish populations are is there. It's actually so, in Lake Michigan. Exactly. Yeah. What was but your, th go ahead. The I other thing up. is that uh, Asian carp, the four uh, varieties of Asian carp are only four of 39 different invasive species that can go in one direction or another. And actually more are in the Great Lakes that can get into the Mississippi River. So this is 
about a lot more than just Asian carp. Let me ask you real quick before we wrap up, because yeah. I could have you here all day. We, I could know just, we could just talk I all know day it. about this. But the eDNA hits that were found in the Sandusky Bay yep. um, for the silver carp. Yep. Um, concern about that, because we've Absolutely. been talking an awful lot about Chicago and, and Lake Michigan Absolutely. and Mississippi River. What is being done to protect um, the, the, the possible floodplains in, in having Asian carp come over to uh, Lake Erie? Well, we aren't directly involved in that. And very honestly, we're a very small organization and have our hands full with the Chicago area waterway mm -hmm. system. I know that a lot of people from the Ohio DNR and the Corps of Engineers are working on that issue. I know the Ohio State University is concerned as well. I think they're trying to examine that more closely. And this Great Lakes Mississippi River Basin Interbasin study is looking at potential connections over here. So, uh, and I think they're going to be doing some more netting and uh, looking in uh, Lake Erie itself. Uh, last question. Yeah. Most pivotal time in the Great Lakes history, do you believe, in the health of the lakes coming in this next couple of years? <laughs> I think it would be hard to say that. Actually, as we are in Cleveland, I think perhaps one of the most pivotal times was back in 1969. And we can thank Cleveland, and, and rightly or wrongly, for really putting this issue of the Great Lakes on the map and really water quality in general. If those things had not happened, we would not have had the Clean Water Act. We would not have had the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement. So I would hesitate. 40 years, yeah, right? I would. I would hesitate to say that this is the pivotal time. It's a critical time, but all times are critical. Dave Ulrich, Executive Director of the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence Cities Initiative. Thanks so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Christy, thank you. Enjoy the rest of Great Lakes Week. I will do that, and you too.